Hello and welcome to my studio. So today I decided to uh, share something that I thought of when I was waking up this morning. I don't know about you, but I, I kind of find some of my most creative time is really early in the morning. Just as I'm waking up, I kind of come up with all kinds of ideas and then I can't wait to get started for the day. So today I woke up thinking about these vintage photos. Um, last week I was able to go visit my friend who I had sent the first uh, stacked envelope junk journal to and she had out on her dining room table all kinds of old photos and different things um, from her family that she was trying to find things to put in her uh, in her journal that I had sent her. And she had some pictures um, of people she didn't recognize, didn't know who they were, and so she said I could take them to um, use in my projects, which is just like a gold mine for me, right? So she had a couple that were, or she had one that was a, a photo I needed to send back to her. So I decided, well, I'm gonna scan these before I send them back to her. So I thought this would be a good video to show how I do that. And then some different ideas of ways to mount them and use them in your journals. So I took um, this, she had, this photo was in this little cover, little, uh, little, frame thing that you could actually stand up is how they you know you, you get you get them from the photographer like this and they can stand up so I, I thought oh this will be fun I can use this for something in my journaling so that'll be a, a future project but the picture I just love this photo so um, one of the things that I really like about it I don't know if you can see but their texture on old photos is kind of like a linen paper linen linen photo paper so I decided I wanted to see if I could maybe recreate that and uh, kind of make something as real as uh, the photo, you know, the original photo, so that it didn't look like it was something that I had just photocopied. So I work on an Apple computer and my uh, printer is an Epson X820, I think. And so I'm gonna show you how I do that and you'll just have to kind of try to, hopefully you're familiar with your own uh, printer and you can kind of, maybe they have similar settings. So first thing I'm gonna do is I went and I put this onto my glass of my printer and mine has an arrow right in the corner. So I put it right here, face down. If I were to have put it somewhere else, I'd be wasting paper in the end, and I'll show you how that works in a minute, but you start right up in the corner. So I put that there, and then I'm gonna open my system preferences and go find my printer and scanner, and then I'm going to open the scanner, okay? And it's warming up, so it'll take a second here. I've already got them scanned, so it'll this'll be kind of quick. Um, now mine, I think, defaulted to pictures or somewhere else. I like to put it to my desktop. That way, when I want to grab it and use it for something, I can easily find it. And then I'll put it in a file folder or something later or in the trash if I don't want it anymore. But I kind of, I keep a file of vintage photos um, so that I, I always have access to them. And then this one defaulted to US letter normally. And I'll show you what happens if you do that. I changed that setting because what's going to happen is when I when I print it out, when I scan it, it's going to scan it to an eight and a half by eleven sheet up in the corner where I put it on the on the glass. And if I if I just do it like this and then print it onto my cardstock or photo paper or whatever I want to print it onto, I'm going to be wasting all the rest of this paper, and I don't want to do that. So this is not how I use it. What I hit instead is this. I go up to detect separate items. Now the way my uh, old computer worked with this printer is it would do an overview right off the bat. This one I have to actually hit scan. Now it's gonna give me an overview of my uh, of what it's going to scan before it scans it. That way if I wanna change something I could, I don't know if I can do that on this one, but it, I'm just gonna show you what it does with the little dotted line thing here. Oh, I don't have a picture in there, so I won't do it. Okay, so imagine that my my picture was up here. Basically, it's going to look like this, but there's a dotted line around it. What that tells me when I see that dotted line around it is it's only going to print that part of the picture. It's not going to imagine the rest of this white space, okay? So it will end up looking, we're going to pretend because I didn't put the picture on there. It's going to come out like this. So it took up the whole page, just that one photo. 
okay? So from here, if you want, you can go to tools. Um, you may have a photo program or something that you like to use to change the color, or size, or anything like that. I'm gonna leave this just like it is because this is gonna be the fastest, easiest way that I do it, and I'm gonna show you how that is. So I'm just gonna file, and I'm gonna print it just from here. And what I do, see it shows it in the center, which means again, I'd be wasting all the, the surrounding paper. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on letter size because that's the size of my cardstock and my photo paper, anything that I have. And then I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to the quality because I wanna make sure it's best. So I'm gonna go to media type and on mine I hit coated paper. It came out a little better quality than um, like plain paper. So I'm just, but I'm gonna put it at best. Now when you do that, it does take more ink, I think, and it's slower. You'll hear as your printer's working, it won't print as fast as it does if it's just on plain paper. That's just because it's trying to do a nice, better quality. And so I like to do that. And then I am gonna go back to my preview here. And I'm gonna, on mine, it says copies per page. If I go to nine, I get nine on there and I'm not wasting any paper. There's some white space here in between, and what I do is I just hit fill entire page, and then I don't, I have a little bit of border. I think there's probably a thing in here to do borderless, but it's not that big of a deal. I'll just trim that off. So I did it at nine, and then I hit print. So you can do this, if you're gonna do it on photo paper like I also did, you'll want to select you know, what kind of photo paper you have. Uh, I used glossy, so I, I hit that selection. But now I have these the scans that I did here, and then I can put them in a file and have them for any time I want to use them. So I'm gonna put this aside and show you some ideas um, that I had. So this was my original, okay? And then I've cut these apart already because I've been playing with them and making things. Uh, but I did one on uh, white cardstock, and then this one is on the, um, so you have to ignore these because I, I already did something, and I'll tell you about that. But this is just on white cardstock in the photo. You can see it's a little bit different of a color, so I kind of wanted to play with that a little bit and then see if I could get my texture also. So this is what it came out of the printer like. And then this one is on cream color. I happen to have some cream color cardstock. So I thought if I want to get that sepia tone, maybe if I just do it on a cream, then it would have a little bit more color. And it did. Still not like the original, but, you know, it's good. And then the photo one probably comes out the best quality if you compare the just the clarity. But it's glossy, and I don't really, you know, that's, it looks like a photo, but I, I want that kind of matte texture of the original. So I started playing around to see if I could mimic this. So what I did, the first idea that I had um, was, let's see my samples here. Was I did a texture first I don't know if you can even see that. It's very subtle. The first one I did was I just took Mod Podge and then I used a foam roller and just rolled over. I put the Mod Podge on and then I just rolled over it. And then I did one where I decided to put some tint in it. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. So we will take, these are some samples. Let me take one that's not done. Okay, so this one has nothing on it. And this was the cream. So I took my Mod Podge. Now I like to work, I always share kind of tools and different things that I like to use. Um, I use this for everything. It's just matte Mod Podge. It comes in glossy, but I like, I prefer the matte. I prefer to buy the biggest thing I can get because it's cheaper if you do it that way. And it has a wide mouth so I don't waste anything. So I pour a little bit into just a little, this is just a little plastic throwaway thing. And I just reuse this until it's so full, you know, from where it's it's been drying um, that I toss it and start a new one. But this way, whatever is still good, I can put it back in the jar and without messing it up. So I just have a little bit in there. And then I'm going to show you two, how, the, how it changes the color. So I'm gonna do this one with no color on it. And 
I basically put the Mod Podge on here and you gotta work kind of fast because you wanna get the texture before it starts to dry. So I put that on there and then I used a little piece of scrim. You can use uh, like cheesecloth or something would work too. And I'm just gonna lay that right on top. And you can use your foam roller or this is a speedball brayer and just go back and forth so it gets nice and even over the whole thing. And then just peel that back. I may have got, oh, I had a little color on here so it transferred, but you get the idea. So I don't know if you can see that texture, but it transferred that linen-y texture onto my photo. And then it's also gonna make it, once it dries, a little bit thicker, which is good, and it sealed it. So it's a win-win-win. So then, the, then I decided you can kind of see how it changed the color. It already made a little bit more sepia than the other ones just uh, because, and I, and I know this has color on it and you'll see why in a minute. That's not why. It did it even when I didn't have color on it. It's just from its original to that. So the next thing I decided is I wanted it, it's kind of a rosy sepia. I wanted to see what would happen is if I put some more color in that. And so I took my vintage, um, this Tim Holtz uh, by Ranger Distress Spray Stain. And I did the vintage photo because I use that for a lot and I thought that made sense, right? So I just, I'm gonna take a tiny little drop. You can spray it or just, I'm just putting a little bit right here on my craft paper, my craft mat. That way I can wipe it up. And then I'm just gonna mix, and you see that, if you can see that there, it's just kind of, just the slightest, slightest bit of color. Okay, and then I'm gonna put that on there. I probably, I didn't put very much, so it might not show up a huge difference on camera, but I just want it to be subtle. And then I'm gonna put this back on. And then just peel that back. So I think you can see, I didn't put very much color in it, but see how it's a little more yellow than the other ones? Um, so it just gives it that vintage look. And then also I have that texture. So this needs to dry. You can use a heat gun or just let it dry naturally. This one I can already touch, so it doesn't take long. So that is basically uh, on the cream cardstock, the original with a little tint in it, and then this was no tint, just Mod Podge. So you can play around with whatever products you have, but um, that's that one I came up with this morning, and it's my favorite, I think, is the one where I used the tiny bit of vintage photo in it. This one, you can see, is a little darker, and that's because I used a different color. I had some um, Distress Oxide in, uh, I think it's like twig or something, gathered twigs, and it was too dark. So I, I, that was too much, but I probably could have put less in it, but I, I like the vintage photo the best. Okay, now I wanna clean that off so it doesn't dry here on my board. And then I'm gonna put this in the water because I don't think I need it anymore. Okay, so on to some ideas. So kind of the, the obvious idea is vintage photos usually you see them put into albums with the little corners. You can buy those little corners. I have a whole bunch of the little black ones and you can buy them in gold foil now and probably cardstock. And I, I saw them in several different things, gold, silver, and, and cardstock and black, I think. But if you wanna do them in a pattern paper, um, this is a scrap of wallpaper that I used in some of the cards that I'll show you the whole piece here in a minute. But um, you can do them in, in a patterned thing. So I did, uh, I made my own out of, I'm gonna show you on a little piece of cardstock here. I cut um, just a strip, um, this one's gonna be a little wide, just a strip of anything. You can use paper, or leftover cardstock, anything. This is, this is gonna be kind of thin because it's paper. Um, but it'll be a, a, a nice corner and then you don't waste all these little strips. So uh, I figured about 3 eighths of an inch is a good width. Half inch for this size photo was a little bit too big and a quarter inch was too small. So basically you can cut this any length that you want. I work off of a long strip um, like this one that I had. I'll show you on here maybe. You know, the first thing I did was I just took a, a ruler, but anything that's kind of has a sharp corner, 
I started off doing them this way, and then I just started freehanding them. So you kind of get your corner, and that's not really a 90 degree, so that's why I started freehanding them. So basically, you want to just fold it like that, okay? And then flip it over, and I'm going to kind of put my finger on the corner, and then I'm just going to fold it back again to this line so that it meets. Okay, this is paper, so it's really easy just to use my finger now. And then just trim it off and it doesn't really it doesn't really matter how long these are because they're gonna be behind your picture anyway so that's one I um, this is just in a cardstock it's a little heavier and I've already had folded it once but just you know fold it and then fold it back the other way and you have a corner that simple and then I actually when I did these I used see they're not it's not actually glued in I used my uh, sticker maker uh, to make those into stickers because the the black ones that I have are like a lick and stick. You can find them where they have like a little peel off back. So that's what made me think, oh, I can just run these through my sticker machine and that just makes it easy. But you can just glue them on. You know, you put this on your, on your corner of your picture, get them all four on there and then just a little bit of tape or double stick tape would work or glue. And then you have a corner. And that way you can you can make them patterned, like I said, and they, they're just a little more decorative. This one's pretty subtle. And I just put it on a piece of cardstock. I can cut this out or leave it big and just have it be one of my journal pages. So that was one idea. And on this, the picture that I used in this one, just so you kind of get an idea of colors, I left this one glossy. I didn't do anything to this one. So this is, I wanted to show as kind of the easiest, simplest thing you can do, you know, that's kind of a, you don't need a, a way to use your scraps and you don't really need any other materials. So that's one. And then um, I wanted to make some different cards. So the other thing, you know, I always think of, okay, how do you see vintage photos in, in albums and books? So one way thing you see is sometimes you just see these little slots in the corners. So I thought, oh, I can make my own. They make a, a, a punch that does that, but I don't have that punch. So I wanted to show you how you can just make your own. So I took my little teeny tiny, I don't know if this is an eighth inch or how small it is, but it's small, it's my, my smallest one. That little punch I decided would be a good way to make a hole and a hole and then I, that way I make my slot, looks like a slot, and you know, and it's just a little more detail. Plus it would give me a place to cut, to know where to cut to start and stop. So on this, on this one, I just eyeballed it I just kind of set my picture where I wanted it on my on my card and then I just used a pencil and drew my just made little dots and then used my punch on the dots and then I took something to protect my table and I use a metal ruler because if you do an exacto knife against a metal ruler you get a nice uh, sharp line so I just went between one hole and the next hole and, and made my cut. So I have my little, little slot. And then on this, this one, I wanted to show you this paper too. So this is a pack of six by six squares from 49 Market. It is a natural mini collection, vintage artistry colors in nature. And it's, um, I used a larger version of this thing for another project, but um, it's just it had some pretty simple papers that I thought looked really good with the color of the vintage photo and that way you could write on the other side. So this one I wanted to show the difference um, from using my distressed oxide versus not. So that that was uh, just one little added touch. So to make this aged like this, if you're curious, um, this one I kind of because it was, this really subtle color and a lot of gray in there. I thought maybe I don't want to use my vintage photo um, oxide. Maybe I want to use a different color. And I I recently started playing with more of these. And I had just bought this one called Brush Corduroy. And it is kind of a, a darker, kind of a, I don't want to say what it really looks like to me, but it's kind of has a little bit more yellowy, greeny color than maybe the um, vintage photo. And what I do is I use, um, I don't know what brand this is, Brea, I think, 
sprayer brayeries. You can find these in all different brands, but I like this one because it Velcros off and on, and you can wash these uh, when they get too much and use them for another color. I only have a few. I need to get more because I don't want to even have to switch those out when I'm working on a project with more than one color, but this one I've used for my brushed corduroy. So basically what I did was I started putting it on here, and I didn't really, when you're working off of a brand new a brand new pad, it doesn't take very much and it comes off right away. And I'll maybe do a little bit on here so you can see, since this one's new. That's really all you need. And it's probably, see, it came off a lot. I don't want that much on there, right? So what I usually do is have a towel or something nearby to take some off so that when you go, see, that's still a lot. So what I usually do, especially when it's new and see how there's not very much on there now, is if I dab it and I've dabbed it too much, I'll first do these edges. And that way it takes some off. And then I go real subtle to the edge before I put too much. And see, I don't even like how that worked. So what I do is I take a baby wipe. And you can kind of blend some, take some off and blend it with a baby wipe. Now that's going to get your paper wet and it really, see how much yellow that made? And I might not really like that either, right? So that's kind of what was happening as I was doing this one. So I ended up adding more colors and I really like how it turned out. So I took um, some of my, first I did that one that I, the corduroy one. And then I did some vintage photo. And because this had a lot of gray in it, I took... Um, this weather or hickory hickory smoke one which is uh, a kind of just a light gray color and again it's a brand new one so I had to be really careful and not get too much on here and dab some off so if you haven't worked with a new pad or it's a new color to you I recommend um, trying it on something you don't care about first so you can kind of get a feel for how much ink you have on your dauber and then that way you don't put too much on. But I really like how this, so this has three colors on it, but I really like how it how it turned out. I, I did the gray the last, but it just kind of took all the colors that were in that paper already and just enhanced them. So that is my one. So this one was just with the little slots. And because I can be a little particular sometimes, surprise, surprise to those who know me, is if this stood out too much, I would actually even go and kind of age the corners of my, just so they weren't so bright white. But that's just me. Okay, so there was one or two, the second one. And then I decided um, I wanted to do, oh, I'll do this one in front of you too. So. This paper was another one from that same paper pack and I liked the leaves on there. So I decided I wanted to, this one I did is the cream one. And this one I did do the texture on. And then I also used my vintage photo, uh, the dauber with the vintage photo. Make sure I don't accidentally put any of the wrong color on here. And I just went around the edge like this, just very subtle with hardly any on it, just to kind of uh, take away the white edge of my picture because it's mostly gonna show. And then you can see the difference in these two papers too. But this one, all I used was my vintage photo. I rounded the corners. That way, to me, it just looks more like an insert. The other thing I found about rounding corners is if you leave them sharp like this, and then you end up using it in a pocket, It's the, the corners kind of get hung up sliding in and out. So if you round the corners, then it makes it easier to go in and out. So I, I tend to do that on almost everything that might go into a pocket. And even if it doesn't, it gives it kind of a nice finished corner edge. And you've seen this in lots of my videos, but I love this We Are Memory Keepers Corner Punch. It does three different sizes. And for this one, I used the seven millimeter, the medium sized one. So for this one, I decided I wanted to do, I had punched my little holes and I got this idea when I had done the one, I was going to do the one for the slot and I thought, what if I don't cut that? What if I sew that? So I am going to just show you real quick. I'm using a darker brown for this one. 
This is just kind of a dark brown chestnutty color. This is from my jewelry stuff. It's kind of just some nylon. I think it's nylon cording that you use for beading. But you can use button thread or upholstery thread. And I'm actually going to double it so it's at least visible. You could use ribbon, twine, anything you want. So I'm just going to start at one corner here from the back. Now you can do these each individually and tie a knot there and have it be done, but I'm just gonna do it quick here and go around the whole thing. And I'm just using a big, kind of like, oop, like a cruel embroidery needle size needle or a post needle. You can use your book binding needle. These holes are big enough for that, I think. Okay, so that's simple. And it's just, I'm just going to, oops, I went too far. Just going to pull that tight and tie it off. And I found that, oops, I like to do three knots because sometimes two comes undone. You can always put a little dab of glue on it too to keep it from coming undone. So I don't know about you, but when I start doing something like this, my mind ends up, before I even finish with one thing, I already think, oh, and then I can do this, and then I can do this. And you know, next thing you know, the whole day is gone. So that was a simple one. And then I'm just gonna tuck my photo in there but it's kind of, you know, an, another really, really easy thing to do that's just kind of a cute, you know, little card. So now I have three. And then I got the idea, um, I wanted to use um, some vintage wallpaper for little cards. And this pack is um, a Tim Holtz worn wallpaper pack. And these are five by eight sizes. And I bought two of these packs because I knew I was gonna love these, but they're just blank on one side and then there's some different pat wallpaper patterns. So you may even use a wallpaper, like if you've gone thrift shopping or something and you find an old wallpaper book, then you can use that. So once I kind of did one, this was based kind of on the width of my, the five by eight. Um, I did trim a little bit off that I used for the corners. But I kind of liked this size to use. So I made a template because that way I don't have to go and measure these holes every time. Because this one I did actually use a ruler and I measured them so they'd be even. I just wanted to try some different ways. So basically I put the size of the card I made because, and these are for if you print nine. That way every time I do something where I print nine on a page, this I know will fit. So... Um, it was just kind of a, a way to later mass make things. So again, though, what I did was I just took my picture, um, the actual photo. We'll pretend this one. I just laid my photo down, and then I just took a ruler, and I actually measured um, three-eighths. Is that it? Yeah. Three-eighths again around. Um, to get my corner the size that I wanted and then mark those holes. So once I've made my template, now all I need to do is if I make a bunch of these, I can just stack them and then, you know, just mark the holes or punch them right through there. So I, I like to have templates. And then also if I forget an idea, I have it, it'll remind me. So that's just an easy, faster way to make all your holes. So for this one, I basically did the same thing. I did the little aging around with my vintage photo. And then I use a clear ruler. If you have a sewing one, which I do, but it's really big. Um, so I kind of get lazy and use this little one. Um, something you can see through. So I, I kind of line them all up here. Pick a line. And then I just use this. Uh, this is a... Stabilo Pen 68, and I don't know, that might be the color. It's kind of a sepia color. I just, instead of black, I tend to like kind of something a little darker brown. But I just make my little lines, so then I would move up to the next one and make lines. 
I'm looking for a stamp or something that will do this whole thing. And I actually tried the thing, if you've seen, there's some people take um, one layer of corrugated cardboard away and then they they stamp that. I tried that, it makes them really, at least the piece of cardboard I had, it was really uneven. So if I ever come across a really sturdy, nice, good piece of cardboard that I can do that with, it might work, but um, the piece that I had didn't. So I'm still looking, but in the meantime, I just take my time and, and make my lines with a ruler. So that way I have it like a little card you can write on. So I did that and then I, I used the same um, stitch idea, but I thought this might be fun to do and put a button on it. So this one I just did with this wallpaper and did a little button in this, that way these photos can come out. So if you really are using an old photo um, and, and don't wanna do the whole scan thing, you're at least not damaging the photo if, you, you know, if it's a family thing. And this one was on the cream color again with the texture done. And again, I think this one had the vintage photo stain in the Mod Podge. So you get that little sepia color. And then, let's see, I did another one, that one, that one, that one. Oh, and then I had the idea to go ahead and make a buttonhole since I did the button. You see how my mind works? So I decided to put it in the sewing machine. And I did the same thing. I used my template right i did this and i went ahead and punched my holes because i wanted to in my sewing machine i wanted to be able to see where i wanted to stop and start my buttonholes and it just made it easier so i just lined that that first hole up in my uh, buttonhole thing on my machine and then i just did a little buttonhole and then i just cut you know just like you do for a button with my little exacto knife and that's cute it looks cute on the back too i could put lines or not and then I just used that as my slot. I also had the idea because these are just copies. Let's see, this one is on the white cardstock and it does have the texture with the color in the Mod Podge. And I thought, I lost my train of thought, that I could just do a cute little buttonhole. Oh, I thought that since I'm just scanned them, I could just even sew just the corners with a sewing machine or go around the whole thing with a sewing machine. I mean, there's so many ideas. You're gonna come up with your own, but um, these are just some that I, I had as I was working today. This one, I actually just took um, some tape and you could use washi tape. I didn't have any washi tape that I liked the look of for this particular wallpaper and stuff. This one, is actually, I'm gonna see if I can pull that off a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. So this is actually the photo paper, the glossy photo paper, but I did that same with the linen fabric with the little tint in it. And see how it changed that? So that, that one, as far as clarity, came out the best. Let me see if I can find. This is the original photo paper. So here it was glossy, okay? And here it is on a card. And where's my original? That's my original. So the color is a little bit different, but it does, as far as the clarity of it, I think this looks pretty, pretty authentic. Now, the one bad thing about my printer anyway is sometimes when I print on photo paper, my ink, and it may be because my ink's getting low in my printer, but see those black lines? Those were just a boo-boo from my printer. Um, and it came out, when it came out my whole sheet, it was the last one, and I and sometimes that happens, I don't know why, but uh, maybe I need to cl clean my print head again, but I hate doing that because it wastes so much ink. So I just went ahead and used it. I thought, I don't want to waste one. So I just kind of, you know, an old photo could have been damaged, right? So I just took um, this piece of cardstock and just did my distressing around the edges. And then I have this cloth tape, cloth notes, paper tape. And it is, um, this is, I don't know, probably quarter inch. And it's the kind that peels off. So before I even... Um, I just tore it so it would have a rough edge. Where's my dauber? And then I just get rid of the bright white from the edges. 
and I had already gone through my, I, I pulled off basically a, a long strip and just kind of aged the whole thing first. And then this has got like a sticky back. Oops. It's not a bright sunny day today, so I'm having trouble seeing. And then I just tape it in the corner. And I just thought that kind of looked cute too. Just kind of a, sometimes you see pictures taped into the photo album too. So that was just kind of another little easy look. But like I said, you could stitch around them with the sewing machine or all kinds of things. So that was just a few ideas that I had for how to um, put photos in your albums and to kind of, you know, scan scan them in. You could even, if you have a program, um, I have some different little photo things. If you have uh, the ability to turn your colored photos black and white, um, you can do that too. You can scan them usually just in black and white and then do the same process. So even if it's a newer photo and you just want it to look old, you can do that too. So I hope you learned something today from this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and I hope you'll subscribe so you don't miss any future ones. If you want to see what I'm working on uh, when I don't do videos, follow me on my Facebook page and I'll put um, links to every, well, at least uh, the products that I used. I'll put those in um, the description. I thought of one last thing that I wanted to show you. I'm going to do that. I'm going to back up here for a second. So in the last video I did, I used a spray um, that I wanted to show on this. Um, when you're trying to make things look old and like maybe water damaged, I I have, I, I don't know if you've ever been to Bodie. Bodie is an old ghost town that I just love and it's actually pretty close to me here. So we spent the day there and I took a zillion photos um, that you can look through all the windows and it was like everything was just left as it was. So all the wallpaper, furniture in the rooms and there's been water damage over the years. They, they have kind of left everything intact. So there's all kinds of torn wallpaper and that kind of thing. So when I was doing this with the wallpaper, it made me think of that trying to do some kind of water damage look. I'll do it on this one since it's the same paper. So it's very subtle. I don't know if you can even, you see the little splatters there? Okay, this one's not done. So all that is, it's um, not that one. It is my favorite mica spray. Okay, so this is from Ranger. It's Tim Holtz Distress Mica Spray. And this one's in tarnished brass. It comes in other metallic colors, but this one's probably my favorite. It's just kind of that aged gold look. So you have to shake it up because it's it separates. Okay, and then you just give it a little squirt. As much or as little as you want. And it, it, it curled up a little bit because it's wet. It wet the paper, but it's really subtle and it has kind of a little bit of a, I don't know if you can even see that, a little bit of a metallic to it, but it kind of just looks like water damage to me. So that's just another little thing um, that you can do to add some vintage to your project. Okay, now we're finished. So again, I'll put the links in the description, just, you know, the products and stuff that I use. So I hope you'll join me next time and have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.